Thank you so much for the invitation to be here today. It's a long time since, uh, since we were here and it is just so good, very special. This morning I would like to reflect on the first sermon that I had the privilege of preaching here at Springwood. It was December 1975 when we were asked by the conference to come to Springwood. We were young. We'd just finished our second year of internship under Pastor Dave Brennan. Remember Pastor Brennan? He was the pastor of Mount Cravat, Eight Mile Plains and Carbrook and we worked with him. And then we came to Springwood. We had a baby who was nine months old. He's sitting over there. <laughs> a bit more than nine months old now. Somewhere there's a photo of us standing in front of the hall. <laughs> that was quite early. That was really, I think, about the first or second Sabbath. And all we had was the hall. In fact, we'd only just finished the hall and we'd only just started to worship in this hall, now known as the Ivan Lovell Hall. Immediately when we came to Springwood, we were struck by the vitality and enthusiasm of this young church. Something was happening here. I have another photo. During that year, we baptised, I think, nearly 40 people. And they, that was one of the baptisms. You'll see up toward the back, Pastor Pete's, right in the back left corner. Uh, a couple along from him is Pastor Ray Kent. Pastor Kent was running a citywide evangelistic program in that year. And uh, we were working with him. We also conducted an evangelistic program in, and listen to it, Springland's Barn. Have you ever heard of Springland's Barn? Probably not. I don't think it's there anymore. But it was down the road somewhere. And Br Pastor Bruce Roberts. Bruce, is Bruce here? No, he's not here today. Bruce worked with me. And uh, together we, we had a great year. I don't know if anyone who is in that picture is here today. Kevin Golchevsky, where are you? There you are. I remember, Kevin, those Bible studies we had together. Week after week, we would come to your home. Do you know what you did to me one night? I, I turned up at 7 o'clock or whatever it was, and you had two Mormon missionaries sitting there. <laughs> and my young heart nearly went through my boots. I thought, whatever in the world am I going to do now? Anyway, it worked out all right, Kev. <laughs> I think they left halfway through, didn't they? And we had a wonderful time together, as did others. I... I, I I can't see others, I'm sure you're here. But they were, uh, they were great days. It was a very busy year, as I've said. We left here and the, in its wisdom, the conference sent us out to the Darling Downs. And we had the uh, churches from Dolby, all points west. Boy, did I do a lot of kilometres that year, or those two years. And Paul, I worked with your mum and dad. What a wonderful privilege that was. Alan and Stella were literature evangelists, Paul's mum and dad. I think you lived at Toowoomba, right? But they used to come out with me, and we travelled a lot of miles together, took a lot of Bible studies together, had a great time in, uh, in those years after we left Springwood. Well, I'd like to reflect, as I said, on the content of my first sermon. It was called, and I have a, actually have a copy of it right here. It was still on my computer. Although I put it on my computer years later, because we didn't even have computers back there. <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> it was the olden days. Okay. Um, it was called The Essence of Being Christian. And I think if I'd prepared it, especially for today, I probably would have called it Why Am, why am I Planted? What does it mean to be planted uh, in line with our theme today? I commenced that sermon by telling the story of Jim. J 
Jim was a pastor's kid, a PK, if you like. He was a typical pastor's kid. He'd been to camp meetings. He lived on a diet of Sabbath schools and appeal for missions and MVs. Do any of you know what MVs is? Some of you will know what MVs is. Missionary volunteers. We used to have afternoon meetings in the church. And he did his best to be normal. He was an intelligent person. He... uh, was quite attracted to the smorgasbord of philosophical options that were floating around. And Jim made a choice. And that choice was to walk away from Christianity. I think if we're honest with ourselves this morning, and if we've really thought about it, we've had some hard choices to make ourselves, haven't we? Sometimes things do not go as we think they should. And we may have been tempted to walk away. I remember regularly asking the question of myself, why am I actually a Christian? Why do I choose to walk down this pathway? And that was the question I asked at the beginning of that sermon. Uh, How many years ago? 47 years ago. And I'd like to give you three reasons. The three reasons I gave back then, because today they're just as true as they were for me back then. The first reason why I choose to be a Christian is because of the amazing story of the gospel. We were at Grey Nomads last week, Julie and I, as were quite a few of you that I've seen this morning. And boy, did we have a fantastic time listening as both of our speakers exposed to us the story of the gospel, the amazing grace of God. And there was one text that kept on coming up over and over again. I think it's probably my favourite text in the whole of scripture. And it's found in Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8 to 10. Some of you know what I'm going to read already. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to to 10. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not the result of works so that no one may boast. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God has prepared beforehand as our way of life. What an amazing, amazing text of scripture. We are saved by what? Grace through faith. It's the gospel. This is not obligation. It is privilege. We must not get so tied up with obligation that we forget that it is a privilege to be declared right when in fact we are dead wrong. It is a privilege to be called sons and daughters of God when in fact we are very lonely orphans. It is a privilege to be created and loved by by the King. This is the amazing story of the Gospel. I would love to speak more. Why were we yet sinners? Christ died for us. The amazing story of the gospel. The first reason why I continue to choose to be a Christian is because of the grace of God. The second reason that I spoke about that day was because of the life and ministry of Jesus. My appreciation for Jesus has continually grown over the years. I I am very compelled by the person of Jesus Christ. We're very fortunate now because we have a number of presentations that have attempted to give to us in story form the life of Christ. First of all, we had the Luke videos. Then we had the Matthew videos. Now there's Chosen. They present Jesus to us in a, in a way that we can reach out and touch. 
They present Jesus to us as someone who is, who is not remote, but someone who, who is with us, who is not separated from us, but someone who, who understands us. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Surely Jesus is the essence of Christianity. Surely we are planted only if we are planted in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. The second reason I am a Christian, because of Jesus. The third reason I gave that day, and boy am I cutting this short, was because I am convinced that good and God must triumph. Have you ever had any questions about God? I have. I have so many questions I could fill a book. I, I, I'm looking forward to the day when I will be able to get some of those questions answered. It was 6am on a morning in June in 2009 and we got a phone call. The doctor at the other end of the line said, go to Royal North Shore Hospital. We live down at Kurumong. Go to Royal North Shore Hospital immediately. Julie, you have acute myeloid leukaemia. Now those of you who know, know that that is the most virulent form of leukaemia that you can have. Many people don't survive just a few weeks when they get this form of leukaemia. We went down to, to the hospital and many months of treatment, many years of ongoing, well, effects of the treatment and Julie is still here. But I've got to tell you, boy did I have some questions for God. I can remember walking up and down the corridor at the at our home in Kurumbong. And I literally was shouting at God. I was angry. Why are you doing this to me? Some of you have had those sort of experiences. In fact, if we're honest with ourselves, most of us have lots of questions we want to ask God, don't we? Life has a way of throwing those questions at us. Satan himself pose the ultimate question to God. Can you be trusted? Are you fair? Are you who you say you are? When Christ hung on the cross, the universe watched. And for the universe, the doubts were swept aside. Christ's death resolved those questions. But for us, questions remain. And I am so looking forward to the day when those questions will be swept away. And God will triumph. You know, it's, it's really the theme of Scripture. If you go to the book of Daniel, and I won't go there this morning, although I'd, look, I'd like to. And you look through the chapters of Daniel. In chapter 2, you see the king challenges Daniel and challenges God. But finally, at the end, the king praises God. He delivers Daniel. Same in chapter 3. Same in chapter 4. Same in chapter 6. It's a theme that goes through scripture where God is challenged. The people of God are challenged with him. But finally there is deliverance. And finally there is ultimate vindication of God. Truth triumphs. God triumphs. Good triumphs. And I, with you, am a Christian because I believe that that has got to happen. That will happen. Let me come back to the story of Jim. I met Jim last week. That's not his real name. He was at Grey Nomads. Jim has come back. But it's not quite the same Jim that left many years ago. He watched his wife suffer greatly and pass away with cancer. He buried a son who died in an epileptic fit. He has visited all of the, well not all, but many of the 
philosophical smorgasbord of ideas and turned away. Jim is back. Jim has decided that the story of the gospel, the person of Jesus Christ, and the hope of ultimate victory are enough for him. They are what he needs, and he has come back. In Psalm chapter 1, and verses 1 to 3, our theme text for this morning. Psalm chapter 1, and verses 1 to 3. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. I, with you, continue to choose to be a follower of Jesus, to be planted in him. May God bless you, each one.